Hey, it's Melissa with OMG Editing. I'm here today to show you how you can change colors on wraps and blankets and sometimes even props. What we are going to want to do is, as you can see these layers, I've always already done the work. But let's not look at that for right now. What we're going to do is we're going to use the lasso, um, the quick selection tool, and uh, a few other masking tools to select the baby and set it apart from the background so that we can manipulate the colors and not affect the baby so much. So let's come in and we're going to duplicate the layer and use the W tool or the quick selection tool to select the baby. And then from there you can go in and meticulously very meticulously, mind you. Make sure you're selecting everything you want. And in this case, I have hair around the bow. I have an ear to make make sure I get right. I got the toes. Um, I'm really lucky there's no gaps to where light has leaked through. Uh, and then we got little fingers. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you um, the select and mask tool and what you do here if you've never used select and mask it used to be a little easier you used to be able to paint it on and um, now it's just a little bit more abstract because when you go to paint it on it sometimes it gives you a hard time um, I like to I like to de not depend on touching it with the brush tool in this application Okay, so let's see. It's looking really good, actually. Um, we've got a few points here where I know pink is showing through. So, so we're going to click OK, and then we're going to click the Q tool. Now the Q tool is turning on quick masking. And sometimes, maybe in your former days of Photoshop, and maybe even now, I know I have done this, I've accidentally clicked this or pressed Q, and this you know, this selection has turned up and you're like, oh my gosh, what did I do? Well, today it's useful, <laughs> okay? Um, you're going to use a black tool, ooh, white tool, sorry, white to get rid of it on the baby, and then black to add it on if you need to. So I'm just going to sort of graze the hair, because what's going to happen is once you put, the hair is already a darker color, so luckily I am not going to have to um, really go into the hair too much. And I'm just going to sweep these legs so a little bit of red shows. Um, I'm pretty sure these shadows down here are going to be needing some manipulation once we add the colors to the background. All right, so we're going to call that a day right there. And we're going to press Q again, and it's selected. So from there, we're going to press Alt Option and add layer mask. So now what we've done is we've selected the baby, and that's preserved. Now if we do anything to this layer, it's going to happen to everything but the baby and the area we've preserved. So I'm going to press Command U. Actually, you know what? Let me show you the tool that people are using these days, which is, um, I go up to the help, I type in uh, replacement. And what it is, is it's image, adjustments, replace color. So the problem with this tool, as it is helpful and useful, it also, if you have something with such varying tones, this whole image is like on the red, orange, yellow spectrum. There's no blue, there's no green, there's, there's magenta. So it's like, once I select pink, my whole image is pretty much selected. And that's not gonna benefit for me because I don't want the baby involved. Even if I play with the fuzziness, I still am going to, um, I'm still going to end up with parts around the sides and the way the depth of the, the, the blanket happens. I'm just not going to use this tool more than I am the old fashioned way, which is just messing with the layer pretty much. So I'm going to show you the two different ways. Once you can use, one, you can use this image adjustments, replace color tool. Um, and what you do is you pretty much just see the color happening before your eyes. Um, let's do something really subtle, like, uh, 
subtle. Nothing subtle on the baby. These are like really perfect. Oh, sunshine. Oh, that's a pretty color. Let's make it an orangish color, okay? Let's make it this mustard color. So you know the problem with this is that you're dealing with um, different shades of the pink and it's showing. You see the speckling. So I'm just not going to do this method. I'm going to do what I know and I'm going to press command U on our new layer. And I'm going to first take the hand and it's going to select. It's like, oh, it's red. So, yeah, I know that. So because I know the red spectrum that I'm using is going to entail lighter, darker, purple, magenta, we're going to open up the spectrum that it's going to grab from. Oops. So when you play with this, you're pretty much saying, if you fall within this color range, you're going to change. So just like that other tool, without the speckling, I'm going to play with the color. And I think I used a purple, didn't I? I think I used a purple. So let's bring it to, oh my gosh, all these tones though. This is killing me. Like, look at this pretty color. And you can see that this one still needs to be broadened because I see speckling. But, so let's find that purple that I had. It's like a light purple. I know I play with the lightness and the saturation. Um, for the sake of this, I'm going to just press OK. And I'm going to show you what I really changed it to. I changed it to this. And so I selected this color and I had gone in and made sure I changed and perfected all of my masking. So let me press um, my O key, not my O my backslash, is that forward slash? That's forward slash. Um, to show you my masking, I was very precise. I spent lots of time coming in here, making sure I'm just grazing hair, and, and I'm actually coming into shadows. So you can see the shadows are selected. There's even some um, on the baby here. So, you can see I'm trying to change the shadow color and same with, um, see like right here we need to fix, it's, it's taking purple and putting it onto where the pink was reflecting onto the baby, if that makes any sense. So right here you can see how the pink reflected on the baby. Pink uh, skin is com incredibly reflective. I don't know if I learned that in the photography world or if I learned that with um, just being in art classes, but it is so reflective. So I'm just, I'm cooling it down, if anything, by adding this purple color. And I'm also sort of, um, I'm sort of mimicking. I think this is just purple from the baby's fingers laying down because um, it's not coming off. I'm mimicking what a purple blanket would have done to a baby had a baby been laying on the purple blanket. Um, okay, so after that, if you don't want to change anything else, boom, what you've done is you've changed a blanket color with meticulous masking and learning how to utilize different kind of masking and selection tools. Um, now if you want to dig deeper and you want to change that bow, um, what I did is I, um, I then made a different layer. So I actually copied this again. I pressed Command J and then I went and I selected the bow. And I worked independently on its own layer because I didn't want to also, like I didn't want to be matchy matchy with the, um, the relativity of the color. So I actually ended up, this looks way darker because if we just show you that layer, oh, it won't work. I show you the app and there you go. Um, I actually played with the curves. So it looks like a really dark baby, dark purple baby, because I played with the curves once I got, once I um, remade the ability to go and change the bow. So I've changed the bow in this one and then I changed the blanket in this one. So it's, it's swappy. Um, yeah, so there's always a chance to use the color replacement tool, I suppose. Uh,
but I can't promise that it's going to work out for you. So there's always a different version of doing something in Photoshop. So there it is. I hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them.